Uh, today we have with us the French ambassador. Uh, he has been talking about the financial crisis and uh, we have the opportunity from the Foreign Student Association of uh, Foreign Affairs to ask him a couple of questions. Firstly, I'd like to ask, uh, uh, when the financial crisis hit Europe, uh, all the countries and the European Union, the world, and especially uh, the French uh, President, Monsieur Sarkozy, was speaking about uh, the importance of uh, everyone being united. And you have uh, talked about it today as well. Uh, do you think that we still are united in this uh, uh, fight of the financial crisis? I think so. If you consider the, the preparation to the G20, you, it was not so difficult to have a common position. I, I mentioned a minute, some minutes ago the, the conclusion of the European Council of March. You have a very precise position, and uh, every member state agreed on that. So we had, uh, now we have reached a, a good common position. So uh, is the French uh, government uh, uh, satisfied with the outcome of uh, the G20 oh, meeting? Yes, really, because uh, we were a little worried that uh, we did not try that uh, some country were reluctant to, to deal with the regulation issue. Uh, and uh, the, the outcome was quite positive on that point. But now, of course, we have to, to follow the, uh, how this uh, agreement will be uh, Produce in concrete decision, but we were quite satisfied, and as you know, we were working very closely with the German Chancellor. So it was for us a good agreement. But we, we, when you consider the different participants, it's a big success to have a common position with uh, U.S. administration, the Chinese president, uh, India, the South African. So it's important. Okay. Well, uh, I'm sure everyone has noticed uh, the popular hunt that's been. Uh, breaking out to the world for bonuses and uh, yeah. greedy <coughs> uh, directors and such, uh, including Sweden and France. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, as I understand, I think uh, France has even taken some legislative measures mm -hmm. in order to prohibit excessive uh, uh, mm -hmm. bonuses. And uh, one, of the, uh, one of the points on the G20 agenda uh, that Monsieur, uh, the President Sarkozy also stressed the importance of was the abolition of tax uh, or fiscal paradises. Do you believe that these two bonuses and, and fiscal paradises, is that really the core of the financial crisis, the problems of the financial crisis, or is it more just a popular hunt for finding black sheep? No, I think they are important, but probably they are not the only, only issue on the table. Uh, we, we, we needed to have a, a comprehensive uh, answer to the crisis, but uh, as, as you can easily understand, when the, you have uh, such a meeting with uh, leaders of uh, 20 countries, uh, they are political leaders, so they, they try to answer also the, the expectation of the people. I think that in your country, like in all, all the countries, people were very shocked when they, they saw that in some companies where they, there were some redundancies and uh, the, the, some uh, responsible could uh, get out the company with uh, what we call parachute dory <laughs> with uh, yeah. bonuses etc so the, the 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 people refused that so it was n it was necessary for them to to uh, to take the, any some decision but and for the the tax events it's not possible anymore that uh, we try to manage uh, the, the the international financial system if you have some country we are out of the game it's yeah. impossible uh, so it's a, a, a real uh, but is it really a structural problem that caused uh, the crisis uh, uh, you know uh, you, you cannot accept that some rules are applying to some country and not to the other so uh, you what is important is that we need transparency the the, the challenge is to have transparency to fight against the secrecy the bank secrecy so just transparency. So we need that uh, all the all the country accept to give some information. So it's normal. It's important. It's not only a, a political answer to the expectation. It's uh, technically necessary. Yeah, I think uh, just the word transparency and also responsibility was key words when uh, uh, the French President Sarkozy had a speech, uh, I believe one week ago or two weeks ago, when he uh, presented uh, his view of the new moral capitalism that we have to uh, 
uh, embrace. Mm. Do you think uh, that we're having a, a, a kind of paradigm shift in the in the near future when, when regards to market economy? <coughs> and That's it's another story. Um, that was the first reaction to when people, not only the French president, said uh, the capitalism now is becoming Im totally immoral. So w you can uh, speak about the crisis in our, with ethics uh, approach. And uh, that's still uh, important for if you want to, uh, to have the support of all our citizens, you need to, to, to have more, more ethics in the, the, the running of the system. But uh, as you, you, you have seen now, we, 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 we now are in a phases when we are discussing specific issue technical issue, how to, to supervise hedge funds, how to, to supervise a rating agencies. So, uh, you, you know, it's, there is a, the general rhetoric, and now we have now working on precise issue. But the, 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 the finality is the same. Mm. Okay. Uh, which brings me to another question, which is maybe a little bit related. Um, how, how, why, why do you think, uh, how do you explain the fact that uh, most Anglo-Saxon uh, countries uh, perceive uh, uh, UMP, the French party, uh, and Sarkozy as being a more a left-wing party? Uh, whereas in, in France, uh, um, uh, there's no doubt that uh, he's considered to be, uh, and the party is considered to be uh, right-wing. No, I'm not sure that... Uh French party, UMP is considered as a left party by <laughs> all the member states, but... Not all the member states, but the Anglo-Saxon, uh, Anglo like England and, and uh, maybe the Nordic countries and, uh, of course, the United States, uh, that's not the part of the European so Union, but still, it's a... No, maybe the reason is that there are two kinds of answers, so it's a sensitive question. So maybe it's because in France we have a tradition of uh, the intervention of state. Mm. Mm? And uh, secondly, it's uh, the president, French president policy now to have a, uh, to not to stay in a specific uh, uh, divide camps. You know, if we have to to find solution, if we have to reform the country, we have to reform without acting as an. Uh, leftist or rightist country. We have to, 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 to cope with the, the issue without uh, trying to, make, to, to create uh, this division. So maybe that could give the impression that uh, uh, it's a leftist uh, party, but I have no comment to make on that. Okay. So uh, last question. Sweden is a strong provocator of the abolishment of the EU agriculture mm -hmm. support. Mm -hmm. Uh, whereas uh, the French uh, seems reluctant to change it. Mm. Do you think uh, the opinion of the French state uh, will ever change on this matter? Yeah. But f so sensitive question, but very important, you know. You know, the, you know probably the story about uh, your opinion. We began with uh, seven, six member states, six founders, and uh, the, the main purpose of the creation of the European Union, at that time it was the common market, was a German and French will, strong will, to create peace and prosperity in Europe. You remember what was the situation after the war. So that was the project. And we have been working to build Europe with uh, Belgium, Italy, Netherlands. So, but after that, uh, the Europe went enlarged. But we, we still consider that we had to share some, uh, some, not only some value, but some policy. So we. At the beginning, we offered all the member states, even to Sweden, a big market. But you have uh, to accept uh, also the common policies. We and as, as but as far as I know, uh, regarding the agriculture support, that was uh, a primary, supposed to be a primary, a temporary solution for uh, the crisis that was in the world market for food and agriculture at that time. And uh, but considering the political. Uh, tensions. It's been yeah. difficult to change it since yes. then. But the, the, the common agricultural policy is the, the only and totally integrated policy. But the, that policy has been uh, radically reformed, you know, since the beginning. So, and uh, it's an ongoing process to reform it. But we consider that it's important not only for France, but for all the European countries 
to have a strong common uh, agricultural policy. I don't know how you are considering the future of agriculture in your country, but for, for a lot of member states, it's important to be sure that we are able to produce foods for, uh, for the, our citizens, for, for, to, to explore them, to uh, have food of good qualities, we need absolutely to be sure that what the consumer is finding in its plate is a good quality product. So uh, you, for us also it's very important to, to give very clear objective to the uh, farmers that they have to protect the environment. We have also to consider that uh, the agriculture is a good way to create balance in the territory, in the country. So for, we cannot accept in France that uh, we have only uh, intensive production. We need to keep uh, uh, agricultural policy in the mountain zone, for example. Uh, we need to have some people with some cows mm -hmm. because they are protecting the environment. So, so your answer is no. Then. Oh, but what? Uh, if there will be a change in the, of in course. the mentality well, I, to I, 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 stop I, giving I, subsidies. No, no, but I, I, I told you that uh, the, the common agricultural policy has been reformed uh, dramatically since the beginning, So, and we will go in like that. But when you, a country accept to join, you, you wanted to join the European Union after, uh, after the, the 19, the crisis here, everybody has to, to accept uh, that now we are working together to find compromise. So now I'm sure that we will continue on that path to, to reform the uh, common agricultural policy, but uh, it's part of the, of the treaty. Okay. okay. Thank you very much, Mr. You're welcome. Ambassador. Thank you. Thank you.